Hello again, and welcome to what chronologically episode 3, but is being dubbed episode 2 of Edin Nuir. So, um, in the last episode we covered some walls, and I know what you're thinking, the next inevitable thing to move on to would be... Okay, probably not, it's liquid. Um, <laughs> so, uh, thought I'd show off, this is just a different take on doing some liquid. Uh, these are, well, obviously they're just amorphous shapes uh, come there um, and I've got a few different ways that you can achieve this that I've got a preferred method and then an alternate method and then I mean there's also the hot glue method that you saw in episode one of um, how I did like the waterfall this is just hot glue, hot glue that pulled at the top of the foam and then I just allowed it to flow naturally down to create this waterfall you can do that to create pools yourself although it can be a bit resource consuming regarding the hot glue now what I've used to create these poles that you can see down here is this, which is liquid latex. Now it's um, there's nothing complicated about using liquid latex, it's absolutely simple and I'm going to talk you through it. Um, it should be readily available at quite a lot of hobby stores. You can buy it in one form or another, It's obviously it's always a liquid, but it could be in a small bottle, you could buy large containers of it, sometimes you can buy pre-coloured stuff. I buy just common or garden it's uncolored um, I buy it from a local um, supplier um, if you can buy it from a store obviously it's going to be cheaper because liquids and um, your postage cost is going to be higher because of it so yeah these um, shapes and whatever all I've all I do is I'll just get these out of the way I, these are what I use to represent water I'm gonna be making some more of those in a moment, um, but all I do is, if I can lay my hands on it, I'm so well set up. This is just a sheet of styrene. Uh, it doesn't really matter about the thickness. What you want is it to be clean and it to be smooth. And all I do is I will take a cup and I will mix up some latex with just some acrylic paint for pigment. You want to make sure that you don't get the cheapest type of acrylic paint because the pigment value of the paint does matter when mixing it with latex. I'm also going to make some um, some lava and some acid just by mi like oranges and reds and stuff. And you can you can paint acrylics onto the rubber. I mean, it they can depending on how much you flex them. Like if you really twist them, the paint could crack and flake off. But let's face it, you're probably not going to abuse them that heavily. So anyway, um, so. I will do a little pop here and I will get myself a some, uh, vessel to mix into and then uh, I will show you the next step. Okay, so just a plastic cup. Um, you don't really have to worry too much about ruining things with uh, liquid latex unless it's only porous surfaces that it's really going to get into and eventually the latex will dry and you can just pluck all of the um, remnants out as a whole. And you don't really have to worry about, um, obviously me saying you don't really have to worry about mess is um, relative. It depends on how titanic a mess you cause. But regarding like getting it on your hands, unless you've got a latex allergy, in which case this method isn't for you anyway. Um, but it will just ball up almost immediately on your fingers if you just run it around in your, between your think, finger and thumb or something. It will ball up and just peel straight off. Um, uh, word of note is liquid latex is typically suspended in ammonia. So that means it is very smelly. So do it in a well ventilated area. I have um, some windows directly in front of me that are open so I'm covering this fact. right? So just an empty cup and I'm not even, I'm, for the purposes of this, I'm not too worried about measuring. That's probably going to be enough for what I want to do right now. I'm just going to be making some more water pools. Um, so I've got, I can't, obviously I can't turn it 45 degrees, but I've got to about here of a cup's worth, and that is plenty. So what you want to do is add, well, I suppose I should shake, oh yeah, that's a, that's a point, is uh, make sure that your bottle of latex is well shaken because the rubber that's inside there can settle and you'll end up with um, a lot of the suspension fluid floating on top and it will make it so that it will be, for want of a better term, very watery. So put a decent amount of paint in, um, probably about 10-15% of the entire mixture. Grab yourself something to stir and... As, as you can see, the 
latex will take on the colour. Now the latex will look very pale because naturally the latex will um, be that white milky colour. However when it sets the colour that you have included will look a lot bolder. I mean this you saw the dark tone of this blue doesn't look anything like what's in the pot. It will. In fact I'm almost certain that the blue that I'm using in this pot is the water pools that you saw in the first place so that gives you a bit of an idea. But what I'm going to go for, I wanted a larger single pool, so that's what I'm going to do here. However, what I did with the um, the progenitor to what I'm about to do is exactly the same method. It was just I made several smaller pools, and it's really, really technical how you do this next part. I'm making sure that you don't spill it anywhere, so make sure you're on a level surface. You want to take your mixed latex and pour. So, I mean, air bubbles that are in there, not too great, but they're also not too catastrophic. And as I said, I, I want this one to be quite a long pool. Um, it being a liquid, the latex will, for the most part, self-level, as long as it's on a flat surface. If it, if it starts running, obviously, you can emergency pick up the plastic car, um, plastic sheeting, and or whatever you're using as a surface, and... So that's now empty. I can leave that alone now, the inside of that it will dry and then I'll just be able to peel this from up here and it'll pull all the latex out of the bottom. Um, right, so this is going to take a while to set, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to talk about an alternate method. So I've already done, covered the hot glue and this is my, uh, pr this is my uh, latex method, this is the way that I like to do my uh, water effects. Just because they're extremely hard wearing and you can colour them in any way that you like and they still get that they still get a bit uh, they still get a sheen over them um i mean um actually just a note this little nub here that obviously what it look a bit odd scissors we'll cut straight through it it's, it's only rubber at the end of the day right so on to method number three so you've got hot glue you've got latex method number three is uh this is uh, just a communal garden uh, wood glue, so white glue, and all it is is I would mix mix some paint in with that, and I would then just layer that and build that up in several successive layers, and then I would put a few layers of that of just the glue on its own over the top of that in itself, just to give it that that sheen. It'll be pretty hard wearing, however, it can crack and split, so it'd be better if you like you backed it onto something like how I've done with my some of my scenery pieces where they're based onto things. Probably be best if you did something like that. But if you have a latex allergy or you just can't get hold of the stuff or you don't like the smell, then the hot glue method is a little bit resource consuming. Um, you can paint straight over it and you can cause effects like the waterfall I showed. Um, or you can use the PVA glue method. You can even paint straight onto things. You can get relatively good effects just by doing that. And then if you wanted a little bit of gloss, you can just give it a single coat of uh, wood glue, PVA glue, and you can get a pretty good effect doing it that way. So, um, as I said, this is the exact same coloration that I use to make these pools. This pool is just going to be bigger. This, being how thick that this is laid down, this is probably going to take several hours in a warm room to cure properly. You don't want to disturb it too much because obviously it will start moving around and it's going to be a pain in the butt. So um, I won't be showing this completed in this video, um, but this is what I'll end up with. So this was my video on like water effects and it will be the exact same for lava, the exact same for acid. Or, and any other colour, it's just the paints that you can mix in with the latex. And, and you, mean, you, you can even build latex up in layers, so if you wanted really fine details you could mix a small amount of latex and using like cocktail sticks or stirrers and, and you, can, you could take latex and add streaks of certain colours into it and whatever else, what, when, it's, when the preliminary layers set you could just add streaks on top and they will bond together. Uh, so yeah. If you uh, like this video, then give it a like. If, um, if you want to see more from me, um, punch the subscribe button. Uh, if you've got anything that you'd like to see me take um, take a whirl at, chuck it in a comment below. If you've got any critiques about how I'm um, um, producing videos, then throw that um, throw that down below as well, and uh, um, I'll take everything on board. Uh, obviously, constructive criticism only. 
and I'll get on to some more videos. Thanks for watching, see you next time.